Uh, okay, hi. So uh, I'm Ming Shan and he's Jun Rong. So uh, we'll be teaching, uh, we'll be going through the show and tell this week. So uh, what we'll be going through will be a graph algorithm. It's called the breakfast search. So essentially, the first question to come to us is what is a graph? So a graph is something similar to this, where you will have um, one node that can connect to uh, the other nodes. So for the nodes, they are also called verti uh, vertex. And for the connecting lines, they are called edges. So um, what does breakfast search does is actually it starts from the source node, and then it will travel down the graph le level by level, exploring its neighbor's uh, nodes. Essentially, is what we want to do here is we want to get from one point to another point. For example, how can you get from A to E? So that is what breakfast search will actually help you with. Then. Uh, the one more thing is it actually uses Q, the data structure, to, uh, to help you with this uh, algorithm. So firstly, we will be starting from A. So Q have the node A in it. So now let us move to A. And this is our first layer. Subsequently, from, the, from A, what can we actually go to? We can actually go to B and C. And this will actually, like for visualization, I have displayed the layers for you. So moving on, we will go to B. And from B, where can we go to? We can go to D. But before we go to D, we will continue on to C first. Because we are covering layer by layer, level by level. So subsequently, we will, we will be able to go to E and F. So if moving on, we will go to D and then find out its neighbor nodes, then go to E, its neighbor nodes, the F, its neighbor nodes, until the whole tree is explored. OK? So, you may, uh, so giving you another example, does anybody remember this problem? It's from our, the, our web application development, <laughs> the lab test, the one that don't make sense because you only have 10 minutes to solve a one mark question. So, uh, so the problem for this is actually we have a Pac-Man there and it needs to get to the exit. And you must find a path for it to get to there that have no obstacle. So what you want to do here is you want to use the breakfast search you'll find the surrounding nodes to visit, which is your B, C, and D. Subsequently, after visiting all these nodes, you'll find out that the only neighbor node you can travel to is E. And then from E, you'll find out that there is F and G. And you keep moving on using the breakfast search until you reach here, where you travel all the nodes that is possible to travel, and you'll find out that M is the place you want to get to. And to get to M, you need to go to D, E, F, H, J, then finally M. So using the breakfast search, it can actually help you find the path within the maze, and it can help you like, uh, find out all the pos uh, various possibility. Okay, so for the applications, you can use like social graph, like Facebook, like you can see the social, uh, the social networking. Like you can find out, uh, maybe I'm friends with Dion, then I'll have a note with Dion. Maybe I'm friends with Jingrong, then I have a note with Jingrong. Uh, so it's uh, exploration. Then we have routing. For example, you have, your current location is SMU. You want to go to like Dolby God. How can you get to Dolby God? So for the complexity of this uh, algorithm, is actually V plus E. V is the vertex, uh, vertex and then E is the edges. Then, okay, so like I say, the purpose is actually for pathfinding for web crawlers. So for example, Google, you have a website. How does it know to how to like map all your all your internal links? So you will go to your home page first. From the home page, you will grab all your links and you'll just keep traveling down until it explores your entire website. Then your GPS navigation system is like, I give you my GPS uh, location. Which bus stop is the closest to me, for example? And then, uh, but the downside is it's computationally heavy and there's a memory requirement because as you, it's quite linear, which is uh, the more nodes you have, the more memory it requires. So that's the downside. Uh, it, so it may not be very suitable for your traveling system problem. So uh, related algorithm will be your depth search, your topology search. Uh, for the so resources, you all can take a look at the MIT Open courseware. It's actually quite useful. Yeah. So I'll pass to Jun Rong. Hello. So uh, the next algorithm will be backtracking. And backtracking, like, like the name implies, uh, is actually uh, we, we try to uh, backtrack to our last known valid position and then we try and uh, work from there. Okay, And it's actually somewhat similar to the brute force approach, just that it's in a more optimized way. Okay, And of course in this solution, and why is it similar to the brute force approach is because it, it tries to uh, explore all available options. 
Okay, so like you see, uh, we try and test all the possible paths. So if we reach a dead end, it will backtrack to the last known valid position and then it will continue from there. Okay. Uh, so essentially, we are just trying to uh, recursively search for, uh, recursively trying to explore different options. We have different options and then we try and uh, work from uh, different set of options so that we can find the, 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 the end location. Else, or if not, we will uh, explore all the, if we will expand all the possible uh, options. So it will stop either way. Okay, and usually it's used to solve constraint problems such as uh, uh, crossword puzzles or Sudoku. Okay, so advantages of this specific algorithm will be it's effective in solving technical technical problems. Okay, uh, it's simply more to, simple to implement as the code size is uh, relatively small, and we do not need to depend on uh, the programming language to implement it. So, uh, any programming language will do fine. It's independent of it. The disadvantages is that it's computationally expensive if the sample size is going to be large. Okay, and this results in a slower overall runtime. And sometimes it detects the conflict too late. So let's say uh, I'm running to a maze, right? I'm running through a maze and then the dead end is uh, quite far away. So I will not uh, find it out until I reach the near the end of the maze. So in th in that case, uh, it will it will be more it will take longer to solve a specific problem. And therefore, we will require other techniques to solve uh, a, large, a larger problem. So let's say, so let's say I'll, I'll implement something that detects the dead end of a maze earlier on so that we will cut that off, cut that option off, and we can continue from there. So that effectively cuts off a lot of uh, options and increases our running time. OK, so a few applications. Uh, first will be schedule optimization. It, it also can uh, be your computer opponents in mind games such as chess. It also helps to solve puzzles and mazes. Okay, so one puzzle that you can solve will be this Eight Queens puzzle. Uh, I'm not sure if you heard of it, but Eight Queens puzzle is essentially we have uh, eight queens. Uh, we place them on an eight times eight chess board. And then according to the rules of chess, we will place the eight queens in the board so that they won't face each other. And that means that uh, in the going by the rules of chess, the queens can move vertically, horizontally, and diagonally. So we will place them in a way that they don't see each other. They won't, they won't be able to eat each other. So the eight queens puzzle, uh, it, it actually can be substituted by any number from four onwards. So, for the sake of brevity, we are going to we are going to start with four. Okay. So how this algorithm works will be: the first queen, we will place it on the first available option. So that will be the first row, first column, right? Okay. So now that we have placed the first queen, how how the algorithm will will keep track of it is. The first queen is placed on the first column. So it will start the queen from the next column, which is this column. Okay. So when we start from this column, it will start to track. So you'll see that okay, this first row, first second column, uh it is unable to be placed there. Then we'll move on to the next row. It's also unable to be placed there. And then we'll go on to the third row. And then we'll find that uh this is available, so we will put it here. Okay, then the third queen. Okay, so keep in mind that the algorithm will keep track of the last known valid queen, which is uh, right here. All right, so the third queen will start from here. So here is unavailable, 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 and then it won't go to the last one because it knows that we have to place four queens, right? So if you place the third queen here, there won't be any more rows for us to place the last queen. So we will go back, backtrack in a sense. We'll backtrack to the last known queen position, which is here. So we move this, we'll place it down the row. So essentially, we are going down sequentially in this row manner. All right. So we will go down to the next row. So once you hit the next row, uh, you will start again. This is our second queen. We have just placed it. The third queen, we will see here is unavailable. Here is here's available. So we uh, place it here. All right. And once we place it here, oops. 
Okay, yeah. Long story short, that one is unavailable too. So you'll backtrack, backtrack until uh, the first screen. All right, so the first screen, just now it was at the first row, right? So now you'll backtrack, you will place it at the second row instead. And then for my second queen, I'll go down. Okay, I'll place it here since it's available here. My third queen will be, will sense that it's available here. And then my fourth queen, fourth queen will start from here. And then, yeah. And then, and that's how, um, essentially how the algorithm works in a simpler manner. Okay. Okay, so for the time complexity, uh, there are many ways to solve the eight queens problem. First will be the brute force method. So, for the brute force method, we have 64, choose 8, all right, because there are 64 uh, grids, and then there are eight, 8 queens, right? So there will be 4.5 billion combinations. <laughs> and the next will be optimized brute force. So for optimized brute force, one of the methods to do it, to, to, to do it is will be, uh, if we have placed a queen in this, this row, uh, we'll skip that row or skip that column or something like that, and it will eliminate uh, certain combinations such as clustering all of the queens in 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 the eight uh, in 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 the same area la, basically so if we consider this in uh, the time complexity will be cut to eight to the power of eight which will be around 60 million combinations and finally for backtracking it will roughly be around uh, eight to the power of three plus uh, eight factorial so time complexity essentially will be n factorial which comes up to about 40,000 uh, combinations. Yeah, so that's all. Thank you. So we invite you to register your feedback. Is uh, you can find it under uh, Tools Survey on eLearn. <laughs>